Hello everyone. Let's talk a bit about how to tell the difference between tungsten carbide and high-speed steel cutters. Maybe you're trying to figure out what you have so you can set your machine's RPM correctly. Maybe you're sorting through burnt-up cutters so that you can get the most from your scrap. Whatever the reason, buckle up, hit that subscribe button for safety, and let's get into it. The biggest and most obvious difference between carbide and high-speed steel is the weight. Carbide tips the scales at roughly double the weight of high-speed steel, so it's very apparent when you're holding a carbide cutter. They just have a lot more heft to them. In fact, this carbide cutter still weighs significantly more than this high-speed steel cutter. This is going to be a bit of a digression, but you should be aware that while the vast majority of indexable inserts are carbide, there are a lot of different materials that are used for inserts. Some could be cermets, which are ceramic metal inserts, most commonly made from aluminum oxide. These are used for turning hard materials at very high speeds. If you ever see a video where there's a river of burning hot chips flowing off of a workpiece, that's probably a cermet insert. Cermets have a dull, almost plastic-like appearance and feel, and because they're incredibly lightweight, it's easy to mistake them for pieces of plastic. You might also run into diamond inserts, which have a telltale diamond crystal on the cutting edge of the insert. On polycrystalline diamonds, or PCDs, the diamond portion is often darker than the substrate that makes up the rest of the insert, although monocrystalline diamonds are often yellow. The substrate may or may not be tungsten carbide, so they could have a similar weight to a standard carbide insert. High-speed steel inserts are also available, but they are nowhere near as common as the other materials that I've mentioned. Of course, this barely scratches the surface of all the different types of inserts that are out there, but that's well beyond the scope of this video. Before we get back on track, I'd like to take a moment to welcome my latest follower on Patreon, Rocco Floramonte. If you want to be a super cool dude like Rocco, please check out my Patreon page. The link's down in the description. Let's move on to appearance, which is another obvious way to tell carbide and high-speed steel apart. Carbide is darker gray, while high-speed steel is a much brighter silver color. The shanks of carbide tools are also usually very polished as well, while high-speed steel tends to be more of a matte ground finish. The way they fail is also apparent due to how brittle carbide is. Broken carbide tends to show chips on the edges or have large chunks missing while high-speed steel dulls and will usually show burn marks from friction. Coatings like titanium nitride or titanium aluminum nitride are not a good indicator since any type of tool can be coated. Even on coated cutters though, the shanks are generally left bare, so you can still tell the difference between them. You can also check your cutters with a magnet. Carbide cutters are going to be slightly magnetic due to the cobalt binder that's used to make them, but they're nowhere near as magnetic as high-speed steel. So if you check two tools with the exact same diameter, the difference is incredibly obvious. This is similar to how some stainless steels are slightly magnetic, but nowhere near as much as a regular steel. Scrap carbide is actually very valuable, so you should definitely save it and send it in for recycling. There are several destructive tests you can do to determine what you have when you're sorting out your scrap. High-speed steel grinds very easily and produces a lot of bright yellow sparks, while sparks from carbide are generally smaller and more orange. Quick safety note, grinding carbide is hazardous to the lungs, both chemically because of the cobalt binder and mechanically because of the sharp grains of carbide, so be sure to wear breathing protection. If you don't want to grind excessively on the tool, use a small sharpening stone on the shank. An aluminum oxide stone will easily scratch high-speed steel, but it won't make much of a mark on carbide at all. I also have a video covering the basics of end mills, which is a logical companion to this one. I've put a link to that one on the left side of the screen. On the right, I have a link to my most recent video. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in a future video, leave those down in the comments below. And while you're down there, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.